Hi everyone and thanks for joining. Today I'm going to do a basic run through on how to fly a Phantom 4 Advanced Drone. This is going to be a very basic tutorial. I'm going to show you how to get it set up as well as get it in the air. And we'll touch on a few of the tips and techniques that I've picked up over the years. So if you're new to flying Phantom 4 drones then this is the video for you. So let's get started. Okay, so the contents of the drone when you buy it consists of the quadcopter, naturally, uh, the remote control, the USB cord also, uh, battery charger and a charger for the remote control as well, it's all rolled into one, two cords here for the battery and the remote there, and of course the propellers. Okay. Let's go and find a park and get this thing in the air. This place looks pretty cool. Uh, before we get started, just to let you know, you will need to download the app on your smartphone from the App Store, DJI Go 4. At the time of this recording, version 4.3.32 is the latest up-to-date version. Okay, so the first step you want to do is to unlock this gimbal lock here. It comes with the drone when you buy it. Just like that, a little bit like that, take that off. You don't actually have to use this, but I always use it. Around to uh, protect the all-important gimbal. Uh, the next step is to attach the propellers to the quadcopter. Four propellers. Now they're colour coded. Two of them are grey. And you can tell by there's a little grey ring there. See that grey ring just around the uh, top of the white part there. And then on the other one is a black ring. You can see that just there. See the black ring. And the way that you correspond that with the quadcopter is that the Next to the motors, there's a little uh, sticker. That motor there, right there, see how that's black, that sticker? So that means a black propeller goes there. And on the other ones, there's a gray sticker right there. So that's how you correspond the propellers. So on this quadcopter, we've got gray here, gray here, black here, black here. They alternate so it, the quadcopter counterbalances when it's in the air. Now the gray ones, you push down, you push the little, you put the uh, propeller on top of the motor, you sort of feel it sort of clip in, and you push down, and then you turn it clockwise, and it locks in. You can sort of fiddle with it like that, you can see that it's locked in. And with the black ones, you do the same thing, except push in, push down, and then you put anti-clockwise to lock them in. You can see that lock in like that. Now the battery goes in at the back, you see there's a tab here, a tab here, fingers and your thumb, finger and thumb, these two, whichever you like, you push in to pull and you pull it out like that and likewise to um, put it back in you push the two tabs down and then you push it into the back of the quadcopter like that and you push it until it clips. Now the DJI drones have a kind of a unique way of turning their batteries on rather than just pushing in the button there's a bit more to it than that so what you need to do so go to the button here, you push it in and hold, you wait until the green lights illuminate, then you release, and you push back in and hold down for a few seconds, and you'll hear the quadcopter boot up. And it's just the reverse to so turn it off. You push in the button, hold down for a second or two, then you release, and you push back down and hold it, and then the quadcopter shuts down. Okay, the remote controller, you've got your uh, spot here for your iPad or your iPhone or Android, whichever you use. This thing can go up like that, you can adjust it accordingly, and you get your uh, device using an iPhone, put it in here like that, and you can close that down so it keeps it in nice and firm. Nice and firm like that. 
and you've got your USB cord here and you plug that into your back of your device there like that and this also charges the phone when the uh, remote control is on which is handy all right so to turn it on um, similar to the battery on the quadcopter you push this button down then release push down and hold and you wait for these four lights here to eliminate it indicates that the remote control is on when you first get your drone instinctively you are going to put your thumbs on top of the controllers however I prefer the pinch technique I find I get better control over the drone and smoother camera movements Once the remote control and quadcopter are turned on, the next step is to open the app on the smartphone. Select Phantom 4 Advanced as the model, and then when the Go Fly signal appears, the drone is ready to fly. Now on the top left of the controller, you've got your mode settings here. See how it says P, S and A, positioning, sport and attitude, that means. When you take off, you always want the mode to be in P mode. That's positioning means the drone will just hover above the ground and will remain there until you move it with the controllers. Once you push go fly, this screen here will appear. The next step is to take the quadcopter off by pushing the arrow top left. A slide bar will appear on the screen to which you slide from left to right. The quadcopter will then take off and hover at four feet above the ground and will remain there until you move it with the controls. The default settings on the controller are left stick push up to ascend the drone, left stick pull down to descend the drone. Pulling left will rotate the drone to the left. Pushing to the right will rotate the drone to the right. On the right stick, pushing the stick to the right will move the entire quadcopter to the right and pushing the stick to the left moves the quadcopter to the left. You push up to advance the drone forward and you pull down to reverse the drone. To land the drone you push the little H button right here and then slide the slider across the drone will then return back to its starting point and land. Now just a word of warning, the drone will return to its default altitude before returning home to its home point. So say for example you were flying at 20 metres above the ground and your default altitude was set to 50 metres, the drone's going to go up to 50 metres before coming back to the home point. So if you're flying near trees or buildings or anything like that, be mindful of that, that the drone is going to go up first. The default altitude can be changed. First, click the three dots, very top right of screen. Then on this screen, click the drone icon, very top, scroll down a bit and you can adjust the return to home altitude there. 50 metres is about my sweet spot, each to their own, you can choose to go higher or lower if you like. One of the mistakes that many rookie drone pilots make is that when they first get their drone, they go up as high as they possibly can and then they make these jerky camera movements from left to right, such as this one here. That's considered poor practice of drone photography. What people are really going to appreciate is those nice, smooth, low orbit uh, camera shots with a nice steady camera, such as this shot right here, where people can really focus in on the subject that you're trying to film. To access the intelligent flight modes, you push the little remote control icon, bottom left of screen. The drone comes with some intelligent flight modes which is another whole video in itself but today I'm just going to focus on two of them the draw mode and the tripod mode when you push draw mode this screen here will appear the little green arrow at the bottom 
you push that and then draw a path on the screen and then push go. This will then fly the drone on that path. You don't necessarily have to draw a straight line. You can draw a square, a circle, or even a figure eight if you wanted to. The drone will then return back to its starting point once that path is completed. With tripod mode, all this does is slow all the movements on the drone down, including the gimbal. So this is absolutely perfect for when you want to get a nice, smooth, slow, steady shot, or when you want to do a nice, low orbit shot around a corner or around an object or something. It's going to allow you to get those nice, smooth, cinematic movements, which is absolutely perfect. This is one of my favourite modes to film in too. One of my favourite techniques is to point the gimbal to the ground at 90 degrees and fly in a straight line. It really gives the audience an opportunity to see things from a different perspective and show some really great detail, such as shadows on the ground. Now the way that you point the gimbal to the ground is to go to the little scroll wheel, top left on the controller, and scroll it back and forth. This will move the gimbal up and down. Ideally what you want to do is have the drone facing away from direct sunlight to avoid glare. In this shot here for example, it was taken in early evening and I've got the drone facing east and I've got the setting sun to the west right behind me which really lights up the area that I'm trying to film in a really nice way that I like. Again, I'm keeping the drone in low orbit under 100 feet to really give the audience an opportunity to focus in on the subject that I'm trying to film. Although there are many different types of camera angles and techniques, my other favourite one is this one here, where you fly at low altitude, really fast over a body of water, and put the gimbal at 45 degrees. And then you take off, and then give the audience a nice big revealing shot. This is the sort of technique you would use for an opening scene. In subsequent videos, I'll discuss more in depth things like camera settings and drone control settings. If you found this video informative, please give me a like and a subscribe, and feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, bye for now, happy flying.